And here's the last uh, question that I want to get to that I think I can answer on my account is from Skeleton Pete, another member of the channel. Skeleton Pete says, when mixing at lower volumes, do you apply the Fletcher Munson curve to take the physical nature of perceiving certain frequencies into account? So I just want to mention this one because I have some thoughts here. The Fletcher Munson curve, for those of you guys who haven't seen it, it's basically a chart that shows how sensitive our ears are at different frequencies. And generally speaking, our ears are more sensitive in mid-range and upper mid-range frequencies. You'll see that they're most sensitive somewhere between 1 and 3K, and then they are a little bit less sensitive at high frequencies, and they're significantly less sensitive at low frequencies. So this is one of the reasons, Jack, that people love to turn up speakers is, A, they get jazzed up by it, and it's just the energy is great, but B, we hear low frequencies so much better when we turn up the monitors. So no. one thing as a, master, as a mastering engineer that I have to do is if I'm mastering on speakers, I absolutely have to, at one point, get the level up to somewhere between 80 and 83 dB, which is a little bit loud. And it's louder than I would recommend mixing for extended periods. But so that I can physically tell how the low end sits next to other records, I need to get it up to that level so I have an accurate yeah. picture of the low end. And I know how that low end sounds and feels when it's appropriate. And once I have it in that range, for me, it's about 82 dB. I have an SPL meter that lets me check what level I'm hearing that. And I've heard every record in my room in 82 dB SPL. I know exactly what an appropriate range of low frequency feels like and sounds like at that level. So if you really have to do really critical analysis of low frequencies, it's hard to do that low. However... Yeah. One of the things that's really hard to do when you mix loud is to get the mid-range exactly right. And that's the most important thing in mixing, is getting the mid-range relationships correct. And one of the problems that you can run into if you're boosting your speakers up super hot and you're mixing at 70 dB, 75 dB, 80 dB, well, first of all, if you're listening that loud the whole time, even if you don't have hearing issues, you're going to fatigue yourself. And when you get fatigued, you're going to make worse choices. You're going to second guess yourself more often. So you need to keep the levels manageable. But one of the problems if you're doing a lot of your mixing super loud is you can hear the low frequencies and high frequencies so much better. Things sound hyped up, big on bottom, shiny on top so much more easily without you having to do anything. And one of the many benefits of mixing lower is that it essentially emphasizes the mid-range force. So it has an effect similar to the orotones that are over my shoulder, where it really emphasizes the mid-frequencies. And a lot, it's not just you, Jack, it's a lot of really great mixers who say that they habitually mix at a level that's similar to conversation level, where if someone was having a conversation in the room with you, you'd have to ask them to stop talking because you can't hear the mix. That level is probably somewhere between 50 and 60 dB, I'd guess, um, but somewhere like that, you know, anywhere from 45 to 60 dB. 50 to 55 dB is common. A lot of great mixers spend a lot of time at those levels, in part because it focuses them in on the heart and soul of the record, the mid-range. And if you want to hear that kick drum, you want to hear that bass, you can't just get it to be audible by throwing a whole bunch of low-frequency energy into it. You boost 100 hertz on your bass, when you're listening at that level, you're not going to hear those low-end boosts you're doing. So if you want your bass and your kick to be audible, you're going to have to do the right things, which is making them audible in the mid-range part of the spectrum, saying, does my bass have enough um, 1K on it, or 800 hertz, or 1500, wherever that bass is supposed to speak? Does my kick drum have enough 3K, or 4K, or 5K on it, wherever that kick drum is, is supposed to speak? And getting the, 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 the mids right on the kick and bass is what's going to allow people who are listening on phones, and earbuds, and laptops to be able to hear those. So if you have good monitors that go deep, but you listen low, the ability for your speakers to translate to smaller systems that don't reproduce lows is much better because it makes you say, how am I going to hear these these low frequency instruments without pumping my room full of lows? And the answer to that is getting the mid-range right. So I think that's the way that I would recommend taking it into account. That's really interesting. Hearing you say that, it's really interesting because I, I often struggle with the level of the bass. And I, fi I found with this record that I'm making now that I'm because I'm working at such low volumes, I'm actually doing it exactly what you were saying. I'm turning up the EQ on my bass so that it's a bit more toppy, a bit more clicky, which I wouldn't normally do. I, I, I normally like basses to be really round, but I'm actually adding a little bit of top end to the bass so that I can hear it at such low volumes. And I'm also 
working a lot more on the bass drum so that at low volumes it's cutting through. So I'm doing exactly on this record that I'm doing now, I'm doing exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. because I, I found in the past exactly what you've said, that when I go into the car and for some reason my car, even at low volume, seems to emphasize the bottom end a lot more because, you know, sort of car speakers, you know, and I'm finding that the bass is way too loud. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa that's not where the bass should be. You know, it's like really ridiculously loud. So yes, I, I think there are some challenges to mixing at low volumes but I, I with this like i say with this record i'm doing exactly what you're saying i'm trying to make those things cut through in the mid-range and i'm doing it without knowing because I, everything you've just said to me was new you know so it's interesting to hear you say that because it really is exactly what i'm doing now i'm trying to make things cut through more which i think in essence is again it's making me a better mixer because instead of just putting loads of bottom end on the bass drum I'm trying to make it cut through at low volumes. And what I always do at the end of the day, I go and check the mix on my phone. And a lot of the time, if it's not cutting through on the phone, then I've got to do something about it. You know, So um, yeah. yeah, it's very good, very interesting what you just said. If you like that short clip, you might love the full length video it came from, or you might love one of my full length courses like mixing breakthroughs, compression breakthroughs, or mastering demystified, guaranteed to improve the way you work or your money back. Hey, if you want something totally for free, we've also got GPU Audio sponsoring this month. Check them out over at gpu.audio slash sonic dash scoop, where you can get a whole suite of plugins totally for free. Thanks for hanging out with me. See you next time.